smaller diameter valve components where small amounts of metal are needed to be poured. The wax pattern component is coated with a refractory shell which hardens. The wax is then removed from the mold using a high temperature solution of water, leaving a duplicate hollow valve, thus the term lost wax. The wax removed from the shell is then captured and recycled for our wax injection process. The de-waxed molds are then fired and metal poured into them. After cooling, the shell is removed and the casting finishing operations begin. The sand cast process utilizes a cope and drag mold design, top and bottom, where the pattern, usually wood, is placed in a box where specially binded sand is packed solidly against half of the pattern. Typically, this process is used for our large diameter valves due to the amount of metal which must be poured. With this process, all the gates and runners are included in the pattern design, as well as the specific heat numbers. Since there is a top and bottom, once the sand is set, the patterns are removed and the halves are assembled together. This comprises the mold in which we pour our metal. Once cooled, the shell is removed and the casting finishing process starts. The wax process starts with wax injection into a pattern. Each valve component has its own solid pattern or die. After injecting the components, the patterns are cleaned, heat numbers applied and prepared for wax assembly. The whole process of heat numbers start in our wax area and is the key traceability identifier for our finished valve product. Along with the component heat numbers, test bars are assembled with each heat and follow the parts through the process. These test bars are what are used to perform the mechanical testing which is reported on our MTR reports. The assembly process is where our skilled employees are adding the flow channels onto the valve component. These are commonly called gates and are utilized with risers. Having the correct flow channels is one of the keys to producing quality castings. As you see from the video, the valve component must be modified to incorporate gating, risers and other process requirements. Note the amount of extra material required to produce a component. This added material is what we refer to as revert and used in our melting practice. All components are inspected and signed off. Valve defects can actually be traced back to the operator if necessary. After the assembled components have been inspected, they are staged and ready for the shell processes. Each component will ultimately receive seven to nine coats of refractory shell material. The first few coats we use are a zircon sand and slurry, while the backup coats are a molite sand, wire mesh and slurry. Each coat of shell requires immersion into a binder for 10 to 20 minutes, which helps cure and harden the shell. As you can see, this process is very labor intensive. Once the shell is completed, molds are staged by heat number and moved to de-wax area. Here the molds are submerged in our de-wax solution until the wax has melted. The molds are then removed from the bath and hot water washed to help remove any residual wax. The molds are then moved to the baking furnaces. The baking furnaces provide three major functions. One, the process strengthens the mold. Two, removes residual wax. And three, brings the mold up to a temperature which facilitates our pouring. A key to quality castings is to have the mold temperature high enough to help the metal flow and avoid shrinkage and non-fill situations. The molds are loaded into the push furnace and brought up to a temperature of 800 degrees Celsius and maintained for two hours. As they progress through the furnace, the temperature slowly builds from room temperature to the 800 C zone until reaching the end and being removed for pouring. Molds are staged by the furnace in preparation for pouring. Each furnace produces a unique heat number and has a unique chemistry makeup. This chemical composition is what you see on our MTR reports. As the melt progresses, chemical analysis 
are performed by taking a plug from the melt, cooling it, and prepping it for spectrometer analysis. A technician will test the sample and will give instructions as to whether the chemistry needs additions or it meets specifications. When the chemistry is verified within specification, the metal is allowed to be poured into the watering molds. Sandcast Foundry As described earlier, the sandcast operation consists of patterns and sand molds. What you are seeing is a placement of the wood pattern into the box. Virgin sand is then packed around the mold. We use reclaimed sand from our knockout area to use for the backup sand. The box is packed and tamped. We use carbon dioxide to inject into the sand to dry and set the sand. Once the sand is set, the wood pattern is removed and the box now has a negative of the pattern. We apply a special coating on the sand and burn off any organics. This process helps the sand resist washing out during the pouring process. Cores are then installed to produce the hollow portion of the valve. Once the cope and drag have been cleaned and treated, the halves are put together by clamps to make a mold. The mold is now ready for pouring. As you can see, the amount of metal is considerably more than that of a lost wax pour and the molds take a considerable amount of floor space as heats are staged. Once the molds are cooled, they are taken to our knockout and cutoff area where the shell is removed and the gating and risers are cut off. All parts are then staged by heat number and sent to our blast and heat treat area. After these processes, the castings are received in our finishing area where workers grind off any shell or excess metal. Parts are inspected and sent to our rust prevention area and staged for shipments to our processing center. There are requirements where we need to use X-ray or gamma ray radiography to verify the quality of the casting. The castings are now ready for shipment to the process center. Upon receipt, castings are sampled inspected for visual and dimensional compliance. Once accepted, these are staged in our warehouse for release to our machining centers. Upon release from our production department, castings are shipped to our machining supplier. Here castings start to become familiar components. As our machining is completed, valves are returned to our process center, where they are inspected for dimensional and visual quality acceptance. Rejected components are placed in either the repair or scrap bins and returned to our vendors. Once released, the valves are put into our finished goods warehouse, where they still wait for production releases. Once an order is ready for production release, the components are pulled from our warehouse and sent to the assembly area. The first process is to hot water wash the valves and remove any machining oils and dirt. Once cleaned, wedges and gates are matched to the valves by machining and lapping of the components. The valves are assembled and staged in front of the hydro test benches. Along with every test operator, there is an inspector at the station. Not only does the operator stamp his unique number to the valve flange, but our inspector also stamps his number to the opposite flange. Once assembled, our valves are now ready for serialization and painting. The valve stems, faces and nuts are covered to protect the components from any paint spray. The valves are then loaded onto our paint line, where we will apply a basic primer and finish them off with a final coat of paint.